Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, this is Noman Khan. I'm 23 years old. Good photo shoot, right? This, this was my first photo shoot. A friend of mine helped me with this. Um, so, in terms of the topic, uh, what we're going to ask to speak for and what I'm going to talk, it's more of that, you know, uh, find what you love. It's not, I'm not practically asking you to go on Tinder or, or any other platforms and look for love, but it's more of that, you know, the things that you do, especially when I'm, I'm going to talk to you all in context of that you guys are college students, uh, most of you are college students and I really love college students. Um, find what you love. For me, it's more of that you need to understand the things that you do in college. Be it anything, be it college festing, uh, cultural fest, uh, photography, debating, public speaking, anything. The things that you do while you're in college, apart from studies, is something that you will love doing after your college and to the rest of your life. I don't know how many of you agree to this, but personally for me, that's what uh, happened. I was a graduate from Presidency College, and I was the college president. And I was a lot into college festing. I was the um, the placement coordinator, the human rights uh, member, and every bit of it. And these things really, I felt that this is my scene. This is something that I can really do. So, but I still never knew in terms of career-wise what I'm going to take ahead, right? Uh, what career should I choose? Whether should I get into an MNC or a startup or what? What happens? You're, you're in your final year, your placements are coming forward, but you don't know as a career what you're going to do. So it was a very tricky uh, situation, and I'm sure most of you would agree to this that a lot of people still don't know what they want to do in life. But there are also people who already make those career plans right there in their first years or second years. So things are different. Uh, these days. So the first step, okay, now when I mean find what you love, and I think uh, the, the TEDx team has given a paper, a notebook to every one of you. So I could, I could, if I could request if you all could take out these notebooks and just write down what is something that you love. When I mean you, that something that you're going to take up as a career or something that you want to do the rest of your life, just write down what you love. And I will all, and I'll tell you why I'm asking you to do all of this, but please make some use of the paper that I've given you. Come on. So when you've written down what you love, it can be photography, uh, it could be gardening, it could be public speaking, it could be teaching, it could be theater, it could be anything, right? So when you write all of this and then ask yourself, what are you doing here today? Or the last one or two years, what are you doing about it? Is if good that if you're already working towards what you love, if you're a photographer and you've left everything else and you're just continuing with photography, great. I, I respect you. But if there's something else that you're not doing apart from photography, you don't like photography, are you doing something else? Is that something that what you love? If you don't love what you're doing, then I'm really sorry. You're just doing it all wrong. You're going to work. You're going to work jobs. Everyone's going for jobs that's making literally sick. But how many of you are doing something what they love? Can someone of you please raise your hands and... Awesome. I have a couple of uh, girls here. Can I can you know what, what is something that you do? Yes? Okay. Awesome. So I think we should get connected later, maybe over a coffee, because even I kind of believe that I, what I've been doing, so right out of college, I got a job uh, in a company which I didn't want to take up, but it was very promising, you know. They even promised you to give you Sodexo coupons. Like, we'll give you Sodexo coupons for lunch. They, they pro offered me a cab and all of, but a nine to six job. A cabin and a desktop in front of you was not my scene. So that's why I listened. I was uh, I listened to a friend of mine and I went ahead to join a startup which provides um, internships uh, to college students. And I really felt that these opportunities are something which actually matter. These are the things what students need because while I was in college, I never knew what an internship was. 
I was waiting for opportunities and the kind of things that we used to do was all kind of odd jobs that you know take some take someone's dog for a walk and that's how I used to earn and then later I graduated I didn't have money to do my MBA literally I didn't have money to do an MBA so that's why I chose to work uh, with a startup instead of an MNC now again coming back to what I asked you to write what you love find what you love and the first step so this is the most challenging part the most challenging part everyone knows they might be they might be very passionate the wallpapers are filled with what they you know really love but how many of you are actually doing that so the first step that you take to find what you love and actually implementing that is what will take things ahead because as i want to mention again something if I want to be a photographer, so I go back saying, looking at all the other professional photographers, this guy is so perfect. He has everything. He has money. He has the best gear. He's, he's more passionate than me, and that's why he's successful. But I am passionate too. But he's not taking the first step to go ahead and do that. So just let me tell you one thing. You don't have to be perfect to do what you want, to be what you want. You don't have to be perfect. It's a lie. So please keep this in mind and a request to all of, all of you and including me that you need to take that first step ahead in life no matter how difficult it is and trust me if you're not taking that first step you're not going to achieve what you really want. So coming to the next slide which is prioritize your work to make it possible because considering the theme I have to keep that in mind. Again my priority was to come here, your priority was to come here, listen to the speakers and maybe try to get something out of it or maybe just you're all here maybe for some reason right you're just here to some if you feel that as a speaker I'm here to share my experience to listen to other speakers and see where I could connect dots where I could socialize and even with you students where I could share my experience and it's again for you just connecting dots but if you're not keeping this as a priority if you just come here maybe for the sake of attendance or maybe if something else then it's not gonna work out so one thing is that if you really like doing something, prioritize it to the top. It's, it's that simple. It sounds very, uh, you know, he's talking all something which is very common. It's, it's obvious. Why, am I, why, why is he stating the obvious things? But these obvious things is what everyone is not taking it seriously and people are just getting sick of it. College, so I did speak a couple of things about my college, so uh, quickly telling you all, as I said, I was the president and, uh, you know, in my final year of the placements, what happened was, uh, I was the, as I said, I was the president, I got into two interviews and I got rejected in both, where all my other uh, students got all selected and they were really happy about it. And then I went back saying, in spite of me being so reputed in college, doing everything possible, how could I get rejected? Then I sort of researched how to crack interviews and I, and I kind of figured where I was do, what I was doing wrong. Then, you know, the third interview that I took, I actually cracked it. Uh, it was in an MNC. And then I met another person who's a very dear friend of mine called Salman Noor, who was an entrepreneur and uh, who was working for another startup uh, in the student space. So Salman Noor mentioned that uh, when I was sharing my concern to him that, Brother, I didn't get through two important interviews. What am I doing with my life? Because for every student, the final year placement is something which is very crucial in their life. When I told him, he just told me one thing. I know where you're doing it wrong. I know what's wrong. So I curiously asked him, what is this that uh, I'm doing wrong? He said, you giving an interview there itself is wrong. Look at you. You're not meant to be there. These walls is not supposed to inside you. You have to get out of it. So that's when I work, I started working with him. He did help me a lot in the initial stage and I got started working with him and that's where we built a student platform for all the college students to provide internships and opportunities and we're the number one uh, platform today in India. Now uh, moving ahead uh, of our college, so this was my first speech. You know, I never imagined me to be standing here. This was me as a president, this was my first speech. And I was actually, uh, I had a lot of stage fear. And this was the first time they pushed me up because it was a mandatory thing the president had to uh, talk. But I really never imagined that I could get here. So as I said, it took a while, but here I am standing. So these are just a couple of pictures of my college, me as an organizer. 
Passion. Now, while I was in college, as I mentioned earlier, also the things that you're going to do apart from studies, the things that you truly do, blindly do while you're in college is something that you want to take up. So my thing was that I wanted to work with students. I wanted to help students. I wanted to provide, uh, take one opportunity from one person and turn that into a thousand opportunities. That was my passion. Be it, it got into event management, it got into artist management, it got into internships, it got into uh, digital marketing, it got into influencer marketing because I wanted to be an influencer where I could, where people could learn from me that I could learn from others and I could teach, give that back to the community. So passion for me was, was always that students uh, was my passion and that's how I got into a startup which was dealing with students. Now trust me, uh, about these, this startup that I'm talking to you about, has this is what has made me uh, today and I'm really grateful to them because these guys have been working in the same field what I believe that this, I could always find a connect with them, right? Okay, this is a very, very, very important uh, part of my life, um, the judge. So while I, was, while I started working in college, uh, I randomly got a call from uh, a college and they said, sir, can you please come to our college and judge one of our events? So, and that was the first call I'd ever got and I never imagined that I could be a judge. I was just a graduate, I didn't have money to do my MBA and I was working in a startup. So I was like, I, I don't know if they've got me to be a wrong person, but they called me to judge and I happily took that ahead. And I, when I went over there, I had no clue, okay, is this something that I really want to get in? No idea about it. How is it going to be? No idea about it. I, I didn't know friends or I didn't know any colleague that who's judged events. I didn't know how it felt. So I blindly took it up and I, and I went ahead with that because as an opportunity, I took that opportunity ahead. And trust me, the first, the feeling that I had after doing that, it was a very small event. It was not even... 30, 40 people in that room and I was like a boss, like I knew everything in this world. I was sitting and judging those poor kids, but it made me feel nice. So sometimes it's, it's okay that you know, you feel you have that power, you have that pen and that paper where you're giving marks to them. Like, listen, I am going to proudly say that I'm going to judge you today. So that feeling was actually really nice. And then trust me, this is what happened with me. Uh, youngest chief guest at the age of 21 because of the things that I've been doing with college students, um, talking to them, motivating them. 100 college festivals, 110 in fact, um, in the last two years, uh, be it any college in Bangalore, I can probably say that I've been there and I've done that, where I've judged each and every one to, their, to the next level. Uh, mentored over 10,000 kids, as I said, uh, the company that I work for, you think, which has been the biggest influencer marketing agency I've worked with has all already provided me such opportunity that I could also mentor a lot of students uh, with different spaces, career, personality development, and uh, other things. Next. So this was my, this is a, uh, imagine I'm wearing a t-shirt. Like I'm just wearing a t-shirt and a denim to a guest lecture in a college. This was the first lecture, Jyotinivas, uh, that I did. So and I just wanted to share that with you. Next. Uh, this was another uh, guest lecture in Bangalore, which was done. Now, this was one of the recent pictures in Manipal uh, that I was judging. This was with one of a professor uh, that I was judging a best manager round. So these are all these pictures which brought me here. The things that I've been doing over the last two years is the reason why I am standing here in front of you at the age of 23 and, the, and I can proudly say that and I can bet on that there's nobody else in Bangalore who's judged 110 college fests, who's been the youngest chief guest at the age of 21 in the college space. Now, and I was recently at Ryan International School as well where I was called as the uh, chief guest uh, at their annual day. Can you imagine? Fourth, fourth grade, fifth grade kids, I had to hand over these uh, kids the mementos. That's what I've been doing and my mom actually asked me, listen, do they think, what do they think about you? Like, I don't know, like, you're just there, you go, you get up like 9, 10 in the morning and then you go and you come back late, but I really don't know what you do and why do these people call you? Like, do, do you have to pay them to call you or what is it? Like, just tell me, she, has, she still has no clue when I even, last night I'm telling, mom, I'm speaking at TEDx Christ University. She's like, okay, so what happens then? I was like, no mom, so they call me and I have to go and I have to talk about a topic, then I can tell my personal life. Uh, and all of that. She's like, okay, great. So what happens next? 
So I get to talk about myself. I get to talk about everything. What more do you want? So, but why do you need all of that in your life? Okay, buddy. Thank. <laughs> Next. So this happened last night. So I was, I was really, uh, I had a lot of work and I was, I was kind of nervous again for today. And um, so I was, so this dear buddy of mine, Ranvijay Singh, uh, from MTV Roadies and Splitsvilla. So I was telling him about this, that, you know, listen, I'm going at uh, TEDx and I'm going to be a speaker at the age of 23. And he was like, he did share his excitement. And then last night, all of a sudden, he just texted me, asked me for my Twitter handle. And I'm like, OK, here you go. And then this is what he had to do. So the Facebook post is of the TEDx uh, picture, the first picture that you saw, that's what I had connected. So this is what I've earned for myself. So these little things uh, I've earned for myself over the last two years, two and a half years. And all I want to tell you all is that now this is again a very, I don't know, you thought this is a mistake in the PPT or just wrongly typed it. So escape shift control, it's more something that I want you all to take this as a call to action. A call to action, control, shift, escape, or escape, shift, control. Escape from your past. The things that have been haunting you. Use the anger that you have, the rejection, or the people who've told you that you cannot do things. Escape from all of that. Then go ahead and shift your focus. Shift your focus from what your current focus is. Just shift from that and take a new focus ahead. And control your actions. The actions, the, the things that you do while you're in college, or the things that you do after college, control those actions. So that results to restart. So all you have to do is restart from where you are today. Some of you might be finding these cushions really cozy and comfortable, so I'm just relaxing back there. So please, if there's something, I'm, I don't want to judge, or I don't want to be a person who's asking you to do things, but this is something that what I did in my life, in my personal life, and I would be really happy to talk to you guys and, and see if there's something that I could do, or it would be great if you could realize yourself. This is the way I could do things in the last two years, and this is where it's brought me. So please, and there's something that I want to show all of you. This is a pure motivation for me. So audio, please. Dim the lights. Right here. I'd hold you up to say to your mother, this kid's going to be the best kid in the world. This kid's going to be somebody better than anybody ever knew. And you grew up good and wonderful. It was great just watching. Every day was like a privilege. Then the time come for you to be your own man and take on the world, and you did. But somewhere along the line, you changed. You stop being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. from and uh, so it's just that you need to find what you love see where you can connect the dots find your passion connect the dots and just take the first step and as I said there's no stopping for anything that you really want in your life so this is where I end thanks a lot